Uh, hello, welcome to the Chambisino Pharmacosis YouTube channel. Uh, to get equipped with the concept and general understanding on the subject of pharmacology, where different topics will be uh, discussed in a simplified form uh, that going to be easily for you to memorize. So starting uh, with the introduction to the pharmacology, uh, where the following aspect will be discussed as the part of the introduction to the pharmacology. The first is the pharmacological terminology, uh, the drug nomenclature, uh, source of the drug and the route of drug administration. So the important thing, uh, uh, don't forget to like, uh, comment, and subscribe on our YouTube channel uh, so that you will be updated when new content is uploaded in our YouTube channel. So starting with the terminology, uh, the first terminology is the pharmacology. So pharmacology, this is the combination or the combination of the two uh, uh, Greek terminology, which is the pharmacon and logos. So pharmacon means drugs, while the logos means study. So this is the study of the drugs. Or you can say this is the branch of the medicine uh, which deals with the uses, effect, and the mode of action of the drugs. Also, we have the clinical pharmacy. Uh, clinical pharmacy, uh, this is the branch of the health science uh, in which the pharmacists uh, provide the patient health care to optimize the medication therapy to promote health and disease prevention. Also, we have the clinical pharmacology. Uh, clinical pharmacology, this is uh, the study uh, of the drug in, in human. So to evaluate the pharmacokinetics, uh, pharmacodynamic effect and the safety of the drug or efficacy of the drug, uh, the drug has to be studied in the human. So when it is studied in the animal, this is considered as the preclinical pharmacology. Also, we have the pharmacokinetics as the branch of the pharmacology, uh, which deals with the movement uh, of the drug in, uh, through, and out of the body. So it deals with the effect of the body to the drug, or what the body does to the drugs. So here we are going to discuss uh, four aspects of the pharmacokinetics, which is the absorption, uh, distribution, and metabolism of the, 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 the drugs. So also we have the uh, pharmacodynamics. So pharmacodynamics, this is the branch of the pharmacology uh, which deals with the effect and the mode of action of the drugs, or this is the effect of the drug to the body, or what the, body, what the drug does to the body. Also we have the pharmacoepidemiology. So pharmacoepidemiology, uh, this is the branch of the science uh, which deals with the effect and the uses of the drug in a well-defined population. So this is the bridge of the food terminology, which is the pharmacology and the epidemiology. Also, we have the pharmacoeconomics. This it is with comparing the value of the pharmaceutical drug. So one pharmaceutical drug is compared uh, with another pharmaceutical drug. Also, we have the pharmacogenomics. So pharmacogenomics, this is the branch of the genetics. Uh, which deals with uh, determination of the likely response uh, of the, an individual to the drug. So different individuals respond different on the same drug. The main reason is because of the different genetic makeup. So you can find that you have some enzyme which is responsible for the metabolism of the drug, which is linked with the gene. So deficiency of these enzymes or abnormality of this enzyme or absence of this enzyme, it can precipitate to the toxicity upon administration of a particular drug that will be responsible to be metabolized by this enzyme. So here we can see uh, some of examples, for example, in case of the, an individual with deficiency of the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. So this uh, enzyme, it is responsible for the conversion of the glucose 6-phosphate into 6-phosphogluconate. So during this conversion, uh, there is a special oxidant that is called the uh, nicotinamide uh, dinucleotide phosphate, which is the oxidized form. It will oxidize this reaction and it will be converted into the reduced form, which is the NADPH. So this reduced form, uh, it is responsible for the conversion when it is in the red blood cell. It is responsible for the conversion of the, glucose, uh, of the glutathione uh, oxidized form into the reduced form of the glutathione. So what are the importance of this reduced form of the glutathione? This is important for maintaining the integrity or the stability of the red blood cell. 
This uh, it occurred because uh, some of the drug when it is taken it has a tendency to cause hemolysis, uh, breaking the red blood cell. So in the presence of the reduced form of the glutathione, uh, the lysis of the blood cell will not occur. So suppose now the individual will have a deficiency of the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. So the red blood cell, it will be fragile, which can be easily fractured uh, in the, uh, upon absorption of this drug. So what are these uh, drugs, including uh, the primaquine or sulfonamide drug and other antimalarial drugs? So this, it can lead to the anemia because of the uh, hemolysis of the red blood cell. Also, we have another, uh, especially uh, the first line and tubercular drug called the isoniazide. This is metabolized by the enzyme called acetyltransferase enzymes. This is the enzyme which is linked to the gene. So some of individuals you can find like they are called the slow acetylator or other they are called the fast acetylator. So it's depending with the presence of the gene which is linked with this enzyme. So slow acetylator, these are the one with the deficiency of the enzymes called any acetyltransferase 2 because these are the enzymes which is responsible for the acetylation of the isoniazide into acetyl isoniazide, which can undergo further metabolism and excreted. So the individual uh, which is consider, who, who is considered as the slow acetylator, it can lead to the accumulation of the drug and it can precipitate to the toxicity. Also, some of an individual can be considered as the fast acetylator when the enzyme is present in the large quantity. Because the drug, uh, once it is administered, it will be uh, fast uh, metabolized and executed without causing uh, the therapeutic benefit. So this kind of individual, they will not benefit to the therapeutic uh, or to the, uh, upon taking this drug called isoniazide. Another terminology is called the therapeutics. So therapeutic, this is the treatment of the uh, disease with the action of the remedial agents. We also have the toxicology. Toxicology, this is the study of uh, the study which deals with the effect, uh, the nature, and the detection of the poison. Also, we have the chemotherapy. So, chemotherapy, this is uh, it deals with the treatment of the uh, treatment of the disease, whether it is antineoplastic agent, it means in case of the killing the cancer cells, or in case of killing the microbial organism with the help of the chemical substance. So. This, it should have the selective toxicity, means either killing the microorganism or killing the abnormal, means cancer cell without killing the normal cells. Also, we have the pharmacopoeia. So pharmacopoeia, this is the official publication book that contains the list of the drugs, that contains the uh, list of the drugs, the effect, uses, and the chemical structure of the drugs. So we have different uh, pharmacopoeia, including the Indian pharmacopoeia. We have the uh, United States pharmacopoeia and the European pharmacopoeia. Also, we have another terminology is called the drug. Drug, this is a chemical substance, which when it is taken to an individual or human, it will alter the physiological activities. So it is used for the diagnosis, uh, control, and the prevention and the treatment of the disease. Also, we have the medicine. So medicine, this is the formulated form, uh, the formulated form of the drug in a defined dose and a dosage form, which is used for the diagnosis, uh, treatment, prevention, and the control of the disease. Also, we have the poison. Poison, this is any substance which, when it is consumed in the living organism, it can induce illness or death to an individual. Also, we have the uh, drug tolerance. So drug tolerance, this is the person diminished response uh, to the drug, which occur when the drug it is taken repeatedly, and the body will have a tendency to uh, adapt to the presence of the drug. So it will no longer uh, respond upon taking the drug. Also, we have the tachyphylaxis. So tachyphylaxis, uh, this is, is the rapid uh, person diminished response to the successful dose of the drug. So for this case, you can find like, the, uh, a particular dose, it was uh, successful. It means that it was uh, causing the therapeutic benefit when it is consumed. But 
it will reach at the time to, uh, the time that uh, the same dose is not uh, responding again. Uh, it is not causing the therapeutic benefit. So it is very common, especially for the drug that acting into the CNS or central nervous system, uh, including uh, the drug like morphine as an opioid analgesic. Also, we have the uh, another terminology is called the orphan drug. So this is the drug which is used for the uh, treatment or the diagnosis of the layer disease. So in this case, you can see, for example, we have uh, the, the DigiBind. This is the, the drug which is used for the digoxin toxicity. Also, we have the, the formipezone. This is especially is used in case of the, the methanol poisoning. So these are very rarely used. That's why it's uh, classified under the list of the orphan uh, drugs. Also, we have the spurious drug. Or this spurious drug, this is considered as the counterfeit drug or an original drug. Also, we have the street drug, the drug which is uh, liable uh, to be uh, abused. So, especially, for example, the cocaine, even the morphine. So, they are considered as the controlled drug. They are, li they are liable to be uh, abused. Also, we have the prototypes. Prototype, this is the parent or the most commonly used drug in a particular classes. For example, we have, uh, if we consider, for example, the beta blocker, propranarol is considered as the prototype of the beta blocker. Also, if you consider in case of the opioid analgesic, morphine is considered as the prototype for the opioid analgesic. Uh, another terminology is the over-the-counter drug or is considered as the the um, the non-prescribed drug. This is a drug which is uh, dispensed by the pharmacist without need of the uh, the prescription from the physician. So, for example, uh, we we here we include like the antacid, the paracetamol. This can be uh, dispensed to uh, the patient by the pharmacist without need of the prescription from the physician. Also, we have the nani uh, over the counter drug or nani OTC. These are considered as the prescription drug. It should be uh, dispensed by the pharmacist to the patient with uh, the prescription from the uh, physician. So, this would include uh, those drugs which belong to the Schedule H. While the nani uh, the over the counter drug, it includes all drugs with the exception of those drugs included in the Schedule H. Schedule G and the Schedule uh, X. Uh, that is all about the terminology uh, in the introduction of the pharmacology. So apart from that, also we are going to see in detail about the drug nomenclature. This is the systematic naming of the drug, especially the pharmaceutical drugs. So this it implies that uh, there is different. Uh, uh, there is several names that can be used to identify the drug. So the same drug, it can have different names. So for example, here we have three different names uh, that can be assigned to the drug. Number one is called the chemical name. We have also the non proprietary names. Also, we have the proprietary uh, names. So in case of the chemical names, uh, chemical name, uh, this is the name which is assigned to the new chemical entity once the, it is introduced. So in case of the uh, the lead molecule uh, for the in case of the drug development and the discover lead molecule it is assigned with the chemical name. This is the name that shows the arrangement of the atoms and the atomic group in the molecule. So you cannot use the chemical name uh, in the clinical and the the in the case of the clinical and the marketing situation to identify the drug. Also, this is the long name. And the name which is given according to the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. So you can see here uh, one of the drugs called paracetamol. It is a uh, chemical name is uh, n 4 hydroxyphenyl acetamide. So apart from that, also we have the non-proprietary name. This is a short name which is assigned to the drug which is not subjected under the proprietary right. So this uh, name also it is considered as the generic name of the drug. There are two uh, uh, generic names of the drug, which is approved name and the official name. Approved name, this is the name which is assigned by a council. For example, United States uh, adopted names. 
uh, and the British approved name soon after its introduction. These are the special council which is responsible to assign the drug soon after its introduction. For example, here you can see uh, in case of the approved name, United States adopted name, the paracetamol is considered as acetaminophen, while according to the uh, British uh, approved name, uh, this is considered as the paracetamol. This uh, generic name or the, 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 the non-appropriatory name, it is most common written by the physician when they are prescribing the drug. So prescription is written in form of the generic names. Also, we have the official names. Official name is like the approved name. When the approved name it is introduced into the pharmacopoeia, this is considered as the official name. And the official name, uh, it contains the same name as the approved name. The only difference is in the official name, the drug, uh, it is when it is introduced to the official publication book, the so-called pharmacopoeia. Uh, also, we have the proprietary name, or it is considered as the brand name or trade name. Uh, this is the name which is assigned to the drug by the company which is manufacturing and selling the drug. So this, it contain, uh, it can be identified by uh, the subscript R on the names. So for example, here you can see the Panadol, it is written with the subscript R. Uh, in case of the Paracetamol, it is, has different, uh, the brand name, for example, are called the Panadol, Ado, Shelado, and the Prinado. So in this case, you can find the same drug it is manufactured from the different company. Also, it contains the different name. This is considered as the proprietary names, or it is the brand or trade names. And in case of the cost, if you compare with the generic name, uh, proprietary name or trade name, it is higher cost compared with the generic names. Also, the, another difference, uh, they might differ in case of the color, but they have the same uh, active pharmaceutical ingredient. Oh, so only the uh, excipient, it might vary, for example, the coloring agent. So the color of the drug, it will differ, but in case of the active pharmaceutical ingredient, it will be the same. Also, the cost, as I said, the cost for the trade name, it will be expensive. And the main reason here is because in case of the trade names, it is not common among the physician, even among the client. So the company has to invest uh, the higher capital for promoting the drug to make to make sure that it is known to the physician so that they can prescribe. Also, this uh, trade name, it is indicated in some of the prescription. So that is all about the uh, drug nomenclature. Also, another aspect that we are going to discuss here is the source of the drug. So source of the drugs, we have different source of the drug. We have the natural source, synthetic, and the semi-synthetic. But in case of the natural source, we obtain it from the plant, uh, whether it is obtained from the animal, the microorganism, or from the minerals. So starting with the natural source, especially for the drug which is obtained from the plant, uh, this is the oldest system which uh, involved the use of the drug empirically. So most of the drug, uh, it was obtained from the plants, including like uh, 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 digoxin, which is obtained from the digitalis, plants, especially the part of the leaf. So this digoxin is used for the congestive heart failure. Also, we have the quinine, which is used as anti-malaria, which is obtained from the synchona, different species of the synchona, especially in the bag. Also, we have the opium, uh, the morphine, which is obtained from the opium, uh, which is the papava somniferum, especially the part of the fruit, which is used as the opioid analgesic. So as you can see, uh, here it shows from the picture, the way how the uh, the dry can be collected from the plant. This is the quinine uh, extraction from the plant. Also, we have the, uh, there is some problem that you can, uh, there is some problem that you can uh, face when you are uh, getting the drug direct from the plant because uh, there is issue with identification of the plant. So you can find that there is a chance for the adulteration because some of the plants, they look alike. So the chance of adulteration is high, so difficult in identification. Climatic and the social condition of the area. Because of the different climatics, also the, the phytochemical constituent of the drug, it might vary. 
or some of the plant it can be available in a certain uh, zones while it is not available in another area because of the different uh, climatic condition, which can affect even the phytochemical constituent which is available on the drug. The season of correction, uh, this uh, 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 drug which is obtained from the plant, it should be uh, collected in the right times to ensure the maximum quality and the quantity of the drug. So this is the challenge for uh, the drug which is obtained from the plants. Also the condition for the storage, some of the drug when it is stored in the presence of the moisture that it can undergo hydrolysis uh, or photolysis if it is exposed to the light. So these are some of the challenges that you can face in case of the drug that you obtain it from the plants. Also you can obtain the drug naturally from the animal. This is the active uh, principle including the oils, uh, protein, fat, enzyme, hormone, for example, uh, like gonadotrophin, which is obtained from the animals, heparin, insulin, uh, thyroid extract enzymes. These are some of the drugs that you can obtain it from the animals. So, for example, here it is indicated like the insulin can be obtained from the pancreas of the cow or the pancreas of the pork, which we use it as an anti-diabetic, anti especially the diabetic type 1. Also, from the stomach of the cow, you can obtain the pepsin enzyme, which is responsible for the metabolism of the protein. So this is the digestive hormone. Also, we have the thyroid. This is the, uh, it is responsible for the extraction of the thyroxine, thyroid from the animal as the hormone for the treatment of the disease, which related to the deficiency of the thyroxine hormone. Apart from that, also you can obtain the microorganism naturally from the microorganism here, specifically the antibiotics. So most of the fungi and the bacteria, they are used for the um, they are used as a source of the drug. For example, here we used the penicillin at the first time in 1928. So and it is used it become on 1940. So most of this antibiotic it is used for the infective disease. For example, we have the penicillin, which is obtained from the Penicillium notatum, Coramphenicol, which is obtained from the uh, uh, Streptomyces Venezuela, Disofuivin from the Penicillium disofalvum, Streptomycin, which is obtained from the Streptomyces vicious, and the Neomycin, which is obtained from the Streptomyces fidei. So these are microorganisms, and this is the list of the drug that can be obtained from these microorganisms. Uh, apart from that, also you can obtain the drug from the mineral as natural source. This includes the metal, uh, the metalloids, and the non-metal, and, and their compounds. So include like the ions, uh, for example, we have the iron sulfate, you can use that in case of the iron, uh, the iron supplement. Also, we have calcium, like calcium gluconate, which can use it for the calcium supplement. Magnesium, like magnesium sulfate, or which is marketed under the brand name of the milk of magnesia, which is used as an antiacid and laxative. Also, we have the aluminium, sodium, potassium, sulfur, lithium, and other uh, mineral compounds. So these are just a few examples of the drug in their trade name, like milk of magnesia, zinc oxide, and sunskin protection. Also, we have the auronophins, which is as an anti-inflammatory, so we can use it for the rheumatoid arthritis as an anti-inflammatory. So this picture, it indicates the milk of magnesia, which is uh, the, the, the magnesia, which we say that it is used for as an antiacid or as the laxative. So apart from the natural source, also you can obtain uh, the, another source is semi-synthetics. This is just the modification of the natural source of the drug by adding a certain chemical. So it is complex in nature, it is expensive and a pure natural compound. For example, here you can see like the penicillin G. So penicillin G, this is the natural source of the, uh, the natural source of the drug. So if you do some modification, you end up getting the semi-synthetic form. For example, we have penicillin V by adding uh, uh, some of the group, electron withdrawing group, that can make the drug orally taken because penicillin G as a natural source, it is labile with the acid, it can be easily broken. So if you add the electron withdrawing group, we end up getting the, uh, the drug like penicillin V or phenethicillin. These are semi-synthetic in nature. Also, we have the semi-synthetic human insulin, which is obtained from the pork insulin. Apart from that, uh, we have also the synthetic uh, source of the drug. This is uh, obtained from the pharmaceutical laboratory. So it includes organic, uh, inorganic, or combination of both organic 
and inorganic. So most of the drug nowadays they're obtained from uh, the, the synthetic forms, almost 90% of the drugs. So this drug includes the antipyretics, it means the one which is responsible for lowering the body temperature, sulfonamide as an antibiotic, uh, antihistamine, anticovazant, anti uh, antioxidant, and another group of the drug. They are considered as the synthetics. Also, we have another technique that you can obtain the drug called recombinant DNA technology. This it involves the utilization of the genetic engineering uh, to uh, synthesize the drug. So in this case, for example, like the human insulin. So you can obtain the small amount of the human insulin, you incorporate with the gene from the microorganism, organism, including the bacteria, especially the Escherichia coli or E. coli. So when the bacteria is, uh, is undergoing multiplication, it will multiply along with the human insulin. So at the end, then you just separate, uh, purify, then you will use it as the drugs. So this is called recombinant DNA technology. So we have so many drugs include like human insulin that can be uh, synthesized or manufactured by this uh, technology. Uh, we have the human growth hormones, the hepatitis B vaccine, the interferon, the, uh, the G uh, colon stimulating factor, the erythropoietin. These are some of the drugs that can be obtained by the, uh, the technique of the recombinant DNA technology. So another aspect, we say this is the root of the drug administration. So we have different root of the drug administration, actually. So more in here, we are going to uh, classify them into two groups. We have the systemic root of drug administration and the local root of the drug administration. So it is classified based on the desired action, whether you need the systemic effect or the local effect of the drug. In case of the systemic effect, you can achieve after taking the drug intero means through the once the drug has to pass through the GIT, including like the oral absorption, which is the most common route of drug administration, sublingual when the drug it is taken uh, just put below the tongue. Also, we have rectal taking the drug through the anus. Also, we have the parental route of the drug administration, which is subcutaneous route of drug administration into the subcutaneous. Also, we have the intramuscular administration of the drug into the large muscles, like the tricep, uh, the deltoid, and gluteus femoris. Also, we can administer the drug into intravenous. Also, this is the most common also used route of drug administration. Intraterior administration of the drug into the artery. Intradermal, this is administration of the, uh, the drug into the skin lazing babes. Also, we have the transdermal route of the drug administration. Apart from that, uh, we have the local route of the drug, like skin, uh, ocular drop, intramuscular drop. This is uh, when your target is to obtain the local effect to the drug. So we are going to discuss one after another. So as you can see here from the diagram, uh, this it shows different route of the drug administration and uh, the passage where it will pass. For example, in case of the uh, the intramuscular route of the drug administration means the drug has to be taken via the nasal cavities. So through this uh, nasal cavity, it means the drug it will bypass the first pass metabolism or the, 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 the pre-systemic uh, metabolism of the drug. It means it will not be metabolized in the GIT, even it will not undergo the metabolism in the liver to reach directly into the central compartment or the systemic circulation. Also, we have the intramuscular injection. Also, it will bypass the first pass metabolism reach dark into the central compartment. Also, we have the intravenous. This is, it will bypass the absorption. It means once after the, uh, the, the administration, it will reach direct into the central compartment, which is systemic uh, circulation. So the availability of the drug, which is taken by intravenous, it is 100 percentage. Also, we have the sublingual route of drug administration, where the drug is placed under the tongue. Also, we have the, uh, the rectal root of the drug administration. This is in this case when the drug it is taken and through the anus or through rectal, the drug get absorbed. 50% of the drug get absorbed through the external hemorrhoid vein. This it will not uh, undergo the first pass metabolism, but 50% of the drug it will be uh, absorbed through uh, the, the the internal hemorrhoid vein. This it will undergo the first pass metabolism. So only 50% of the drug it will reach into the systemic circulation when it is taken 
uh, via the oral, uh, I mean via the, 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 the rectal route of administration. So here we include the, those enemies and the suppository root, uh, suppository drugs. Also, we have the transdermal patches. This is the, called the transdermal route of drug administration, especially for those uh, sustained and controlled release of the drug. So if you want to sustain the release of the drug, you can take them in form of the, 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 the transdermal route of drug administration. This is specifically only for the high lipid soluble. You apply the drug in the topical to achieve the systemic uh, effect of the drug. So also you can see to another uh, image, for example, if you see here, this is the intranasal, which means uh, the drug is taken through the inhalation, through the nasal cavity and reach into the lungs, get absorption. The effect it will be very uh, quickly because uh, it, the absorption take at the base of the vast of the alveoles. Also, we have the oral route, including the tablet capsule, even suspension uh, solution can be taken orally. This, it has to reach into uh, pass into the the mucous membrane of the GIT. So first pass metabolism is possible upon taking the drug via the oral route. Also, we have the pulmonal, it means via the respiration. For example, here, the drug is taken via using the nebulizer or the pressurized uh, metal dose inhaler. Also, we have uh, subcutaneous, where it will bypass the first pass metabolism. Transdermal means it is applied via the transdermal patches, especially for the high lipid soluble to sustain the release action of the drug. But you apply topically, but you achieve the systemic circulation of the drug. Very important, especially to the high soluble, uh, high lipid soluble drugs. The same uh, image here it show uh, the, the 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 same uh, different route of the drug administration. So we are going to discuss uh, one after another. For example, here yeah, the first is called the sublingual or buccal route of the drug administration. So this is the administration of the drugs. In case of the sublingual, you put the drug under the tongue, or the buccal cavity means the drug is uh, placed the, uh, between the gums and the cheek. So here, these are the different time. If you see here, these are the different time in which the drug undergo changes. For example, just after applying, this is show after one hour. The, start, start, uh, the drug start dissolving slowly until it will uh, be absorbed. So this case, it is very important, especially for the drug, which is not irritating in nature, because it can irritate the, the, the mucus of the oral cavity. So for the parental route of drug administration, this is special for those drugs. Uh, the drug are not passing through the, the gastrointestinal tract, the GIT. So the drug reach into the systemic circulation by passing through uh, whether it is taken uh, parenteral, uh, I mean like whether it is taken by uh, intramuscular, uh, intravenous, interarterial, uh, interarticular, and other different route of the drug administration, parenteral. So sterility is very important for the drug that is taken uh, by parenteral. So you can see uh, there are different advantages and disadvantages of the, the parenteral for the general, general parenteral route of drug administration. For parental root of drug administration advantage is first onset of action. So if you want to achieve the action first, especially in case of the emergence, you can take, uh, opt the drug to take via parental. Useful for the unconscious patient. If the patient is uncooperative, for example, if uh, the patient undergoing like the uh, vomiting, this in this case, uh, you have to administer the drug uh, in the form of the parental root of drug administration. Also, it is suitable with extensive first pass metabolism. For example, the drug like propana, which undergo extensive first pass metabolism. To bypass the first pass metabolism, you have to take the drug via parental route of drug administration. Also, we have uh, another advantage. The drug is not absorbed orally. So we can have some of the drug, for example, if it is taken by intravenous, it will reach directly into the systemic circulation. So biobility of the drug, it will be higher. In case of the IV, as I said, IV by a bit of the drug, it will be a hundred percentage. Also, we have the uh, the drug destroyed by the gastric juice. So, for those drug which is destroyed by the gastric juice, has to be taken by the parental route of drug administration. The disadvantage it requires a separate condition because we need the sterility. Preparation should be sterile, so it is expensive. It requires invasive technique and with the painful. So this can lead to the painful, especially to the site of injection. 
They are never safe administered, so you cannot administer this drug that is taken through the injection, but there is some also exception, for example, subcutaneous uh, uh, absorption of uh, subcutaneous administration of the drug, specifically the insulin. This is possible for the safe administration. This is just an exception. Also, they can cause the tissue injury and the nerve uh, the nerve vessels to the nerve vessels, so this can lead to the necrosis, uh, especially for the drug that is taken through the intravenous or through the intramuscular. So as you can see, uh, the first is uh, another, the first is called the uh, the intradermal route of drug administration. So in case of the intradermal, the drug is administered into the uh, skin raising blade. For example, uh, in case of the, uh, the 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 DCG vaccine administration or the sensitivity test, for example, the, the tuberculin test, as you can see in this diagram, this indicates the tuberculin test, so you just inject a small amount of the drug, and then you see the hypersensitivity or the sensitivity of an individual to the drug. So it is useful for the drug like uh, the, 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 to see, or for the diagnosis of the, the mycobacterium tuberculosis, also you can use it to determine the sensitivity of the drug, for example, the penicillin sensitivity, whether the patient is hypersensitivity or not. You can take the drug through the intradermal route of the drug administration. Also, we have the subcutaneous route of the drug administration, whereby the drug is injected into the subcutaneous tissue, for example, into the thigh, abdomen, or into the arm. The common drug that can be taken by the subcutaneous include the insulin, the adrenaline, the demogate, uh, the pellet implant, for, including those uh, biodegradable and non-biodegradable implant. So this is specifically for the administration of the testosterone in case of the, 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 the implantations. Also, we have the advantage and the disadvantage for the subcutaneous route of drug administration. So subcutaneous route of drug administration, it is safe administered is possible, especially for the insulin, the depot preparation, because in this case of the subcutaneous route of administration, the absorption, it is very slow, so you can sustain the release of, uh, of the drug. So it is very important, especially for the not, uh, it's called the no plant for the contraception. So for this case, uh, disadvantage is suitable for the non-irritant drug. The drug that has to be administered by the subcutaneous route, one of the conditions should not be irritant in nature. Uh, also, slowly absorption, it is not suitable for the case of the emergence because the drug it is administered into the subcutaneous where the, uh, it is less vascularized. That's why it is stated that uh, it is contraindicated to absorb, the, uh, to take the drug subcutaneous in case of the patient with the shock and the constriction. This because it will uh, further delay the absorption of the drug because in case of the shock, most of the blood, it will be uh, uh, moving in case of the central compartment. Slow uh, drug, it will be in the peripheral compartment. So contraindicated in case of the patient uh, with the shock and vessel constriction. Another route of drug administration as a parenteral is the intramuscular route of drug administration, where the drug is taken especially into the large muscle, including the deltoid, the uh, uh, triceps, the gluteus maximus, including like the paracetamol, uh, diclofenac. So here it shows the different muscles in which the drug it can be injected. For example, in case of the thigh, you can administer the drug in these muscles, also in the buttock, also in case of the upper arm. These are the different regions where the intramuscular administration of the drug uh, can be taken. The advantage for intramuscular, it is more rapid absorption than the oral. Uh, it is used especially for the mild irritant drug, so it is in, 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 in comparison to the subcutaneous. Subcutaneous, the drug should not be irritant, but in this case, you can take even the mild irritant drug. It is a depot injection, soluble drug, uh, suspension, it is given by this route also. So it is very common, especially for the drug which is lipid soluble, not for the aqueous uh, soluble uh, drug. The disadvantage, uh, aseptic is very important. So sterility should be maintained. Also, uh, IM or intramuscular drug, it can cause uh, the pain for the site of injection and it lead to the sterile abscess. Safe administration is not possible, as we have seen in case of the subcutaneous, where it is possible to administer, uh, safe administration is possible. Also, this is, uh, there may be injury to the nerve. So in this case, it may lead to the necrosis, especially when 
the uh, sum of the nerve which is supplying to a particular muscle get damaged. Example, uh, like sciatic nerve which is supplied to the muscle of the buttock. So it is in the risk of being uh, damaged when the drug it is taken through the intramuscular. So this is not much common use the root of drug administration. Apart from that, also we have the intrathecal root of drug administration. This is the administration of the drug uh, into the subarachnoid space directly into the cerebrospinal fluid. So this is very important, especially for the treatment of meningitis infection. For example, in case of the meningitis uh, disease, which is caused by the cryptococcus uh, neoforman. So we, for that, you can take the amphotericin B as the drugs uh, for the treatment of the meningitis via the, 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 the intrathecal root of drug administration. Also, you can administer the drug like lignocaine as a spinal anesthesia via the lumbar punctures. Also, we have another route of drug administration is the intravenous route of drug administration. Most common, uh, the parental route of drug administration. The drug is injected directly into the vein, uh, into the blood through the vein. So here you can see some of advantage and disadvantage. So disadvantage, the advantage is the bioavailability for the drug which is taken via IV, it is 100%. Quick onset of action, Larger volume of the drug can be administered. Also, highly irritant drug can be uh, administered by this route because it will be administered, especially for the anti-cancers. Very irritant drug. Hypertonic solution, for example, the 20% manito can be taken by even in case of the treatment of cerebrospinal. It's called the cerebral edema. Uh, also, in case of the IV, constant plasma level is maintained, for example, in case of the dopamine. But the disadvantage is that uh, it can cause the local irritation. Uh, safe administration is not possible like in subcutaneous. Strictly aseptic condition is needed as a, because it is a parental route of drug administration. Exervization, uh, it can lead to exervization of the drug when it occurs. It can lead to the thrombophlebitis and necrosis, especially for the adjoining tissues. The depot preparation can be given through the IV route of drug administration. So if you can see this image, this is the example of the necrosis that takes place after taking the drug through IV. This is the picture that shows uh, the administration of the uh, one of the third generation uh, cephalosporin drug that's called the safety axon, which is marketed under the brand name uh, the, the power safe. So because of the exacerbation uh, happened when the administration of the drug, this leads to the necrosis of the adjoining tissues. So this is the way how it can happen. So care should be taken when you are administering the drug uh, through the intravenous route to make sure that the, the tip of the needle, it is inside of the veins to avoid the extravasation. Also, we have the oral route of drug administration. This is the very common route of drug administration, and it is convenient to the patient. So both the tablet, suspension, solution, form, dosage form can be administered uh, by the oral route of drug administration. So in this uh, oral route of drug administration, the drug is taken orally and it has to reach into the mucous membrane of the GIT. So especially for the drug that are undergoing the first pass metabolism, this is not suitable uh, to take them via the oral route of drug administration. So the advantage, it is safe, uh, cheaper, painless. So it is different from the injection one, which can cause the pain. Convenient for the repeated and the prolonged use. So it is easier for the patient to take it repeatedly and it is convenient. So it re reduces the patient compliance and uh, it can be self-administered. The disadvantage, it is not suitable for the unpalatable and irritant drug because it can lead to the nausea, vomiting, uh, irritation. In case of the irritation of the mucous membrane, it can lead to the uh, peptic acid disease. So this is not suitable for this case. Uh, An absorbed drug, it is not suitable. For example, one of the drugs are not absorbed, for example, aminoglycosa like gentamicin, uh, neomycin, uh, and some of the drugs like neostigmine. These are uh, the drug which is water soluble, so cannot be taken orally because absorption is not possible upon taking it orally route. Also, we have the drugs that are destroyed by the gastric juice, for example, penicillin G, insulin. This cannot be taken through the oral route because it can be uh, uh, degraded by the gastric juice. For those that are going extensive first pass metabolism, this is not suitable route of drug administration. And in case of the patient who is unconscious, for example, start as a epilepticus patient, 
this is not uh, the suitable route. Also, for the patient with the severe uh, nausea and vomiting, this is not the suitable route of the drug administration for this condition. So these are the, some of the drugs that can be taken by the oral route, including the tablet, parrot, and the capsule. Also, you can take the drug in form of the suspension or the solution in form of the drug. Another route of drug administration, the sublingual route of drug administration, where the drug is taken, uh, is placed under the tongue. And uh, this route, it bypasses the first place metabolism. These are the sum of example of the drug that can be taken by the sublingual route of drug administration. For example, nitroglycerin, buprenorphine as the opioid antagonist, nifedipine antipertensive, uh, desamino, uh, oxytocin. These are the just few drugs that can be taken sublingual. The advantage, uh, you achieve the quickly, uh, quickly onset of action. And the action can be uh, terminated is just spitting out the tablet, for example, the nitroglycerin, which is used as an antiangina. So it can be associated with the several effects, including the hypotension. So for this case, you just spit out the tablet to terminate the action. Also, another advantage, it is uh, bypassing the fast pace metabolism, safe administered. So this is possible, but it is not suitable for the drug which is irritant, and it is only for the drug which is uh, lipid soluble. The drug with the bad taste, it is not suitable to take them uh, sublingually. So as you can see here, this shows the sublingual route of drug administration whereby the tablet is placed under the tongue. Also, we have the buccal route of drug administration. In this case, the drug is kept between the cheek and the gum. So as you can see the image number three, that indicates that the drug it is placed between the cheek and the gum, slowly dissolving, sustain the release action, and it will bypass the first pass metabolism, and it is safe administered like the sublingual route of drug administration. So these are the, the different images that show the different uh, route of drug administration in case of the sublingual at the different time, the way it's showing the, uh, the, the dissolution. Also, we have the topical route of drug administration. This it involves the application of the drug on the surface of the skin or on the mucous membrane. So whether uh, it can be the mucous membrane of the eye, the mucous membrane of the ear, or the mucous membrane of the nose. Also, you can apply them into the vagina, urethra, and uh, in the surface of the skin or through rectal. These are considered the topical application of the drug. Also, uh, in case of the rectal route of administration, for example, here you can see this image, it indicated the rectal, uh, the suppository uh, dosage form, which can be taken uh, via the rectal. Another route of drug administration is the transdermal route of drug administration. This is the form of the topical. Uh, it is applied topically to achieve the systemic route of, uh, to achieve the systemic effect of the drug. So here it includes the drug which is high lipid soluble. So it is applied along with the special patches. For example, in case of the nicotine, which is uh, used as the drug for the cessation of the cigarette smoking, we have the hyoscine or scopolamine. This is an uh, antiemetic drug which is used for the motion sickness, which is just applied at the, just below in the posterior region of the eye. So you just apply them uh, with the special patches, slowly release the, uh, that will be benefit, uh, especially when you are traveling, you are, uh, you are in the risk of suffering from the motion sickness. So you can apply uh, one hour before starting the journal. So it will be released for three, uh, one up to three days slowly release. So it is very benefit in case of prolonging the duration of action of the drug. We have nitroglycerin, which is used for the, as, as an antiangina. This is applied at the chest we, along with the transdermal, with the patches, slowly release the, and it can be used as a prophylaxis for the angina. Also, we have the intra-arterial uh, administration uh, of the drug. This is the drug, it is administered directly into the artery. But this is not common route of drug administration. It is used especially in case of the diagnosis study, for example, the coronary angiography in case of the cancers. So this is not much common use the route of drug administration. Also, we have the inhalation route of drug administration. This is very common, especially for the drug which is volatile in nature. And the drug, it is uh, applied uh, 
uh, the absorption of the drug it take at the base of the vasty of the surface of the alveolar. So you can see the absorption it is very fast. Most of the drugs that can even be studied through the inhalation include the salbutamol beta. Uh, this is uh, the beta, uh, beta, uh, beta adrenergic drugs. Also, we have the general anesthesia can be taken through the inhalation on the ipratropium as the and uh, one of the parasympathetic drugs. So you can take them through the inhalation, specifically should be volatile or gaseous in nature. The advantage quickly onset of action, I've said that the absorption take at the base of the vast surface of the alveolus. So small amount of the drug can be administered in this case of the inhalation. So you can, uh, amount of the administered can be regulated. So as you see, this case of the uh, inhalation route of drug administration, once the administration is discontinued, the drug it can diffuse back and it can be excreted through the exhaled air. So termination of the drug it is easily. The disadvantage are <clears throat> the drug should not be uh, irritant in nature because it can cause the irritation of the mucous membrane of the respiratory uh, system. So for example here you can see uh, the administration of the drug with the nebulizer. You just see uh, uh, pumping the drug, whether it can be the salbutam or ipratropium, or it can be the uh, inhaled corticosteroid through the inhalation route of drug administration. Also, another same image that show now the distribution of the drug once it is absorbed through the inhalation route of drug administration, it will uh, distribute into the lungs, make absorption in the vast surface of the base of the alveolus. So, first onset of action is very important when the drug it is taken through the inhalation. Apart from that, we have the intraarticular route of drug administration. This is the administration of the drug uh, directly into the joint. So this is especially for the administration of the drug, for example, the steroid anti-inflammatory drug in case of the treatment of the uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Apart from that, we have the nasal route of drug administration. This is administered through the nasal cavity. And it is very important, especially for the drug like the gonotrophin releasing hormone. Also for the drug like desmopressin, xylometazoline, oxymetazoline, which is used as a nasal decongestant. So it is very important to be taken through the nasal cavity. It bypasses the first, first metabolism, safe administration also is possible. So in case for the parental route of drug administration here, these are just a few concepts that you should understand when you are administering the drug through the parental route of drug administration. For example, in case of the intramuscular route of drug administration, the needle it is placed at a uh, 90 angle degree. But for the subcutaneous, this is 45 degree uh, angle where the drug is administered into the subcutaneous tissue. But intravenous direct into the vein, uh, the angle of the needle it should be or the syringe should be 25 degree of centigrade but for the case of the intraderm where the drug is administered into the the skin raising brain uh, the drug uh, it is uh, the the angle of the needle is almost ranging from uh, 10 to 15 degree uh, the degree so for this are uh, the different techniques that you can use when you are administering the drug parenterally and this is all about the introduction uh, to the pharmacology so thank you for watching. This is Chambesino Pharmacosis. Uh, don't forget to watch the next uh, uh, presentations. Thank you very much.